sometimes there are polyatomic ions that um, may not have other similar polyatomic ions where we can directly see the relationship between the names and the formulas. Um, sometimes they have slightly different prefixes. So there are some that sometimes you just have to kind of learn them standalone. But that doesn't mean that you can't apply some of the same ideas. So take permanganate, for instance. All right, so we see that um, we have a per prefix, so that told us something. We see M-A-N-G in the middle, so um, that's going to be where your element is suggested. Um, and hopefully you're careful and you recognize that as manganese, M-N, uh, not magnesium. Um, and we see A-T-E at the end, which told us it's got oxygen and oxygen is going to be at the end. So when we think about permanganate, we've got two things that we already know about it. We know it's got manganese and we know it's got oxygen at the end. Now, the only thing we're not quite sure about off the bat is how many oxygens. But again, if we think, what, what did we learn when we learned the first set? The ATE ions, our choices were either three or four oxygens. Now, couple that with what you know about the per prefix, per, short for hyper, meant elevated. So of your choices between three or four, hopefully you're going to choose four because that's the greater number of oxygens. And so permanganate has the formula MnO4, and it's got a minus one charge. All right, if we take dichromate, part of this should sound familiar. Chromate we had in the first set. That was CrO4 with the minus two charge. So the only difference here is the prefix di. And if you think about the prefix di, uh, that is sometimes used as a root word to indicate two of something. So dichromate is almost like saying two chromates. So if you, if you apply that, you might think, all right, Cr2, and then chromate had four oxygens, so you might say eight, but it's not quite eight. It's a little bit less than that, so it's, it's actually seven. Sometimes there's polyatomic ions or there's things that you just have to find something wacky that kind of sticks in your head and, and makes it memorable. Um, and so some of the things that I've, I've noticed or come up with over the years, uh, take them or leave them if you want. If you come up with a better way, by all means, uh, do what works for you. Um, but one of the other polyatomic ions that we have is oxalate. And oxalate's formula is C2O4 with a minus 2 charge. And so looking at that, um, again, you can do the straight up memorization thing or you can look for things that are going to uh, trigger something and, and remind you of something that can hopefully help you remember the formula. And so when I look at oxalate, I see ox. And when I think of an ox, I think about, you know, pulling the plow, pulling the wagons on the Oregon Trail, uh, and it's kind of like a cow. But I look at ox, I think cow, C-O. It's got two horns and four legs, C2O4. And, you know, it's got a negative two charge. But the charge is you just kind of memorize those uh, and learn those by memorization. Another goofy one that, uh, that I come up with and, and tends to work, works for me, uh, students uh, tend to remember it, uh, come back and tell me that they remember it, um, is for acetate. And so acetate has the formula C2H3O2 uh, with a minus one charge. And so it's, it's unique in that it's a little bit longer. It's got more than just two elements in it. It's got three elements in it, but it still ends with ATE, ends with oxygen. What I, what I like to you know, tell students with this one is acetate and the acetate ion uh, are found in acetic acid, which is the primary ingredient in vinegar. And vinegar's got lots of good uses, uh, but one thing that people like to do, some people, not so much myself, uh, but some people like to put vinegar on their french fries. And french fries are made out of potatoes. And so to those folks, they think that adding vinegar to their french fries uh, really enhances them. And so when they go uh, to an amusement park or a festival or a football game and they get some vinegar, they might put vinegar on their french fries to ace their taters and make them taste better. Uh, so when you look at the formula for acetate, it's kind of long like a french fry. So when you look at that long formula, you think, huh, that's kind of long. Kind of reminds me of a french fry. Don't know why, but it does. Uh, and I like vinegar on my french fries. And so I'm going to put some acetic acid. I'm going to ace my taters with that uh, acetic acid, that vinegar on top of that. Probably with some sodium chloride, some table salt as well, just to enhance the flavor. So hopefully you found some of these tips to uh, be helpful uh, from the beginning where we talked about the ATE endings or if it ended with oxide, uh, the placement of the oxygens, 
uh, some of the prefixes, what they mean, uh, all the way to maybe some of the goofier ways to uh, remember some of the polyatomic ions. But bottom line, um, whatever it is that, whatever method you use to help you learn the polyatomic ion formulas, it's really going to be crucial that you learn these and are able to recognize them um, just as easily as you do the element symbols. So it's all about recognition. And the easier it is for you to recognize and the quicker that recognition is, easier writing and naming chemical formulas is going to be, and that's going to make it easier to write and um, read chemical equations and then on down the road, chemical mechanisms.